In this video, I'm going to go through some examples of using implicit differentiation to find dy by dx. So in each of these cases, I want to find dy by dx equals something in terms of x and y. Okay, That's my target. So let's take a look at number one. Now, when I do implicit differentiation, I make sure that I write down d by dx of both sides first. So x squared plus y squared equals d by dx of 9. Now, the main reason for why I write that down is it reminds me that I need to differentiate both sides of the equation. Quite often, what I see is that people don't differentiate the right-hand side and leave it as 9. And that's quite a common error. And of course, that's just going to mess up everything thereafter. So we're going to differentiate x squared with respect to x. Well, that's just 2x. y squared will differentiate to 2y. And because it's got y involved, we stick a dy by dx on the end. And the right-hand side differentiates to 0. So if I subtract 2x from both sides and then divide both sides by 2y, I'll have minus 2x divided by 2y, which of course is minus x over y. So this is the equation of a circle. So centered at the origin with radius 3. So the gradient at any point on the circle will be minus x over y. So if you have a coordinate, a pair of coordinates, that lie on the circle, you can substitute them into that, and that will tell you the gradient of the circle, or the gradient of the tangent of the circle at any point. Okay? So, of course, when y is 0, uh, you're going to have um, a uh, asymptote here for dy by dx, because you're going to be dividing by 0, and that's coming through because of the circle when y is 0 will be here and here. Okay, and so you get the vertical lines for the tangents. Okay, let's move on to number 2. So again, I'm going to write d by dx of the left-hand side, xy, is equal to d by dx of the right-hand side. Now, with the left-hand side, x times y, I'm going to need to differentiate this using the product rule because we've got the product of x and y. So we have the first times by the derivative of the second. Now, y, just by itself, would differentiate to 1 dy by dx. So just dy by dx. So we've got the first x times dy by dx plus the second, y, times the derivative of the first, which is just 1. So we just have plus y. Now, there's no extra dy by dx there. And the reason for that is that in that second step, I didn't differentiate y with respect to x. I didn't differentiate a function of y. It was y times the derivative of x, which didn't have a y involved. So there isn't a dy by dx that appears there. And the right-hand side will, of course, just be 0. So now I can subtract y from both sides and divide through by x. So dy by dx will be minus y over x. OK, and that's what I wanted. Right, so that's number 2. So number 3, d by dx of x squared y squared plus y is equal to d by dx of 2. So this first term, x squared times y squared, I'm going to have to use the product rule for that. So that will be the first times by the derivative of the second, which will be 2y dy by dx, plus the second times the derivative of the first, now, x squared differentiates to 2x will be 2x times y squared. So the second times the derivative of the first. Then we have y. OK, so that bit is differentiating the x squared y squared. Now we're differentiating y with respect to x, which is dy by dx. And the right-hand side differentiates to 0. 
So let me just tidy this bit up because we've got 2x squared y. So I'll just write that as 2x squared y times dy by dx. OK? Now I've got two terms that have dy by dx, so I'm going to have to factorise the dy by dx out. So I'm going to factor out the dy by dx, so 2x squared y plus one lot of dy by dx. So I factor dy by dx out of those two terms, and I'll move this over to the right-hand side. So minus 2xy squared. Now divide both sides by the bracket. So dy by dx will be equal to minus 2xy squared over 2x squared y plus 1. OK, and so that's my dy by dx. OK. Right, let's go for number 4 then. d by dx of 3y minus 5 cubed. Take away x cubed. And then d by dx of 2y. So in order to differentiate 3y take away 5, all cubed, I will use the chain rule for that. So the derivative of the inside comes outside. Now, the derivative of the inside will be 3 dy by dx. So there'll be 3 dy by dx. The power is going to come down to the front as well. And I'm going to take 1 from the power. So that's using the chain rule. The minus x cubed will differentiate to minus 3x squared. And the right-hand side, 2y, will differentiate to 2 dy by dx. OK. So let's move all the dy by dx's onto the left-hand side and the 3x squared onto the right-hand side. So you want to group the dy by dx's together. So we have 9... 3 times 3, 3y minus 5 squared dy by dx. Now I'm moving this over to the left-hand side, so I've got take away 2 dy by dx. And I'm going to move the 3x squared onto the right-hand side. Now I can factorise the left-hand side. So I'll have 9 lots of 3y minus 5 squared take away 2 lots of dy by dx is equal to 3x squared. So dy by dx dividing through by the bracket will be 3x squared over 9 lots of 3y minus 5 squared take away 2. OK, and I'm done. OK, right, number 5. So d by dx of 3xe to the y is equal to d by dx of 7x take away 1. Now for the left hand side I'm going to have to use the product rule 3x times e to the y. So we have the first times by the derivative of the second which will be e to the y dy by dx plus the second times the derivative of the first. Now the first here is 3x, so that just differentiates to 3. So I have 3e to the y. And on the right-hand side, the derivative of that is just 7. So, I'll subtract the 3e to the y from both sides, and then divide both sides by 3xe to the y. So take 3e to the y from both sides first, and then divide through by 3xe to the y. OK, and that's my answer. All right, last one. So we have d by dx of 
sine of 2x over cosine of 3y is equal to d by dx of 2x plus 1. Now, there are alternatives to this, um, how you're going to tackle it. I'm going to use the quotient rule for the left-hand side just because um, it gives us a bit of practice for the quotient rule because I've used the product rule, I've used the chain rule, so I'll use a bit of quotient rule now. Um, you could uh, have multiplied both sides by cosine of 3y first and then differentiated both sides. So that would have been an alternative. But I'll use the quotient rule here. So we have the bottom cosine of 3y times by the derivative of the top, which is 2 cosine 2x. Take away the top times by the derivative of the bottom. Now cosine of 3y will differentiate to minus 3 sine of 3y dy by dx. So, minus 3 sine of 3y dy by dx over the bottom squared. So, cosine squared 3y. And the right-hand side just differentiates to 2. Now, what I'll do first is I'll just tidy this up a bit. I'm going to multiply both sides by the cosine squared 3y as well. So I'm going to have 2 cosine 2x cosine 3y plus 3 sine 2x sine 3y dy by dx is equal to 2 cosine squared 3y. Okay, so I've multiplied the cosine squared 3y from both sides and I've tidied up the numerator to get that. Now, if I subtract that from both sides and then divide through by that, I should get my dy by dx. So I've got the 2 cosine squared 3y. I'll subtract that, so 2 cosine 2x cosine 3y, and then divide through by this, 3 sine 2x sine 3y. And there's my answer.